Choke, no joke, cheeky choke, no joke. Choke, no joke, cheeky choke, no joke. Choke, no joke, cheeky choke, no joke. We here now. I'm in the building. Sorry I'm late. I thought I put the time to 7.30, but I just saw I had it at 7.15. I see y'all talking trash. Please bear with the brother. Sorry I was on CP time. Please, I'm sorry I was on CP time, man. Michael Woods in the building. Riz, what is this? Riz Lyricist, what's good with you? Prove me wrong, what up? HM Prototype, Charles Johnson, CJ, what up? Tony King in the building, D-Dub, Prototype, Pat Moore is in the building. Choke no joke. I think I'm going to uh, be giving out some wrenches today. I need some new fresh moderators, you know? I need some new fresh moderators. Other moderators getting into YouTube beef and common beef and you know what I mean? But I'm here now. Let's get to the show. Choke no joke, you already know. KVD went to court today. We gonna get to it, all right? My man Keefy D went to court today. Keefy D went to court. Choke no joke. I am in the building. Let's go, all right? Who should I make a moderator today? Kenyatta. Kenyatta, you deserve it. All right, let's go. No palm tree to trees and the palms of dealers and fiends. Late night roam the streets. Weed is weaker, but it's cheaper. Not many chicks frying like divas out west. Every chick's a model like Eva, and you know I'm far from believing her. So I'm g her like she g me. Banging in L.A. is a different thing. At the end, you either dead or on the bang. Getting out, doing better things. On Sunset, where they hang. Hollywood, where they hustle for change. Times Square here, it's the same. No matter where you go, you'll find a lane. On the west, they kick it with cane. On the east, trees the souls you think. East coast, west coast, east coast, west coast. Grab your wraps, roll it up. If you rap, west coast, east coast, west coast, east coast, west coast. West coast. Grab your glasses, take a toast. If you rep East Coast, when I'm on the West and I'm doing my thing, no offer me coke or your nose I bang. Friends don't offer other deadly things. Thanks for the hospitality, we'll still hang. I won't judge you, leave me as I came. On the road to success, top of the game. Eat all the finer things in the food chain. Teach my kids to do the same. Where the East Coast. West Coast, East Coast, West Coast. Grab your wraps, roll it up. If you rep, West Coast, East Coast, West Coast, East Coast, West Coast. Grab your glasses, take a toast. If you rep, East Coast. Gotta love life, they offer wonderful things. Being the travel is a privileged thing. Came back to the East, air wasn't fresh. Streets filled with trash, various people in the ass. It's easy to tell who's upper middle class. Police and racism, same as crash. Back to where they not social, where they less vocal. When they don't know you, be careful, show you around the East Coast, West Coast, East Coast, West Coast. Grab your wraps, roll it up. If you rap, East Coast, where the East Coast, West Coast, East Coast. West Coast, pop your bottles and toss the cork. If you rep West Coast, both coasts are known to give you fame. Got Papa Rossi playing cameras your way. Got you bobbing and weaving like Cassius Clay. Most thugs turn Muslim in older days. Change their name to a law they pray. Probably till they decay. This go out to the east and west. For big and pop, y'all, let's connect. Rather West Coast, East Coast, West Coast. Grab your wraps, roll it up. If you rep West Coast, whether East Coast, West Coast, East Coast, West.
west coast you can't get the west without the es so it's manifested that we connect uh. you know what it is choke no joke learn from mistakes baby you know what it is greg on the track rest in peace baby Either war we in now you know what it is. Joe, no joke, welcome to the smile treatment, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My man had to come through and make sure it went through. Y'all niggas is in trouble. Choke, no joke. I ain't no joke to mixtape. We here now, you already know, let's go. Choke chillin', got away from the billin', ain't shit really changed though, I'm still that villain. I'm making money with rhyme, fuck black on black crime, beef and money don't mix, like Muslims and swine. I'm talking milk, penicillin', y'all be illin', y'all be thinkin' y'all killers, with y'all school fits grillin'. Kick that bullshit to me, y'all be wet though like Bruce Lee, and Brandon, and Hearst, on the highway to heaven. Man, you making mad threats and stuck in one section, I'm OBP like Naughty. Make a connection Talking under your breath Get you something you don't need Two fully loaded max Filled up with heat Nigga, you sweeter than 30 days for a body Pop shit to these niggas See me walk by me But I ain't looking for no beef I don't eat bologna But I bring a whole cow If you run up on me Shiesty Try me and hype me To peel your wig back Like 10 cent icy Ringing. Stop bluffing, I got you threats, they mean nothing I respond like Bond, I come through on bombing Playing bodegas, flipping Montega You tan in the Jacks, I tan in Jamaica Vega, wouldn't bust if he raped ya Your chick got blazed up, hit it like Jada Why you blew up a pager, had a brief like Vader Your star at war with the lightsaber, I'm here to lyrically tear your bread, nigga, you a spear. I jack you up, now you out of here. Throw me on the 600, now fuck your nigga humming. Blowing down a fab with a bad bitch blunted. I take it there. Y'all niggas don't want it. Y'all niggas don't want it. Y'all niggas don't want it with no joke. Who you thought it be? Represent the NYYC. Bring it on if you niggas want some of me. Have y'all niggas feeling it like Jay Z? Uh, no joke. Who you thought it be? Represent the NYYC. Bring it on if you niggas want some of me. Bronze King like the L O R D F I N E double S C. And that bullshit y'all do, y'all niggas don't stress me. Oh yeah, and you already know, eating war what it is. Uh. Choke no joke, I ain't no joke. The mixtape, we here now. Don't follow those cats. The niggas that be on the gram. Tell them what, what they doing. <laughs> choke, no choke. You know what it is. Yo, y'all niggas with the stay DL. Down low. Stop flossing, man. What you, you, what you just. You just want them to just come and get you. Learn from our mistakes, man. That's what this is about. Learn from mistakes. Choke, no joke, let's go, you already know, make a love, let's go. My aim was enlightened, drop jewels on you, you thinking I'm jealous, I ain't got cheddar like you, I'm the dude to a game, you got school, was a local cat, snatch you when I made moves, yeah. I'm paranoid and preaching, you, you was sleeping, knew you were sneak deep and couldn't see us beefing, learn from 
mistake. No sure I got cake and press a nigga to rob me. Bitch still my fate. Get knocked by the fans. Lay up four by eight. Ass so busy flushing, ain't thinking about Jake. Loose, yapping, they wiretapping. Video taping, your ways in action. Front like Tom's hard, two door garage. Ice like Liberage, with no damn job. Without a reasonable doubt, you think you Jay Z with your platinum jewelry. He got a job, B. You shining on doctors with four degrees. Laughing because I'm broke, I'm broke on the streets. Stay DL, BDL and Sal. You ain't DL when your name ain't Bell. For beef, we not dolo. For cash, you go solo. Thought I was your man, shot me down like Manolo. Thought I was your partner when you played me was whack. No niggas dust that I wouldn't flip like that. What gives? See your man struggle while you live? That's some shit. Struggling, give you the kicks. Used to stick for gooses. Warm when we pump deuces. Break night in the jacks, trying to see millions like Bruce. You don't act like you used to. I'm the dude. When niggas was friends, you like, yo, yo, yo. I wet you like McClain for those who claim to be pain. The game of death, that's what you get when got game. Ill with automatics, we never static. You carry that niggas, put one in your cabbage. Fear, don't have it, you fill me with laughter. In OG and C, they know a rich you gonna clap for. Like Dan get dapper, see a mill be Casper. They trade the doctor, the math for math. Stay DL, DL and Sal. You ain't DL when your name ain't bad. With your pockets, cop the ice locket. Yeah. She's somewhere in Houston, you blew like a rocket. Her seed was bait, through the line she caught it. Gave her all that loot, she couldn't afford it. Praying to them bitches, y'all feeling hell. Blue puff in your face, daddy, all about Benjamin. Remember me, I'm your friend to the end. Like Chucky, used to slay bitches like Buffy. Thinking why they cuff me, think of the luxuries you had. And it's out with other willies you brag. Push the big bends with 20 year trim. When in the club, Chris for all my men. Sitting across the bar, what's up, star? Back to reality, you back in bars. You chose not to listen, had the H class glisten. Through the rules of the game, you played yourself on position. Stay DL, BDL is L. You ain't DL when your name ain't Bell. Stay DL, BDL is L. You ain't DL when your name ain't Bell. Stay DL, BDL is L. Yo, son, yo, son, yo, so that says me, yo, see, you ain't noticed me, yo, I all see, these man. diamonds and stuff, yo, how this can I fat lie? diamond ring I got, yo, yo, yo what you talking about, yo, yo diamonds, yo, yo, you know what I'm saying, yo, yo. I got 35,000 hours on me right oh, now, oh my god, nigga, I can show you the money right now, I can Look. show you the money, no, you ain't gonna show me nothing, man, I can show you my gun, yo, what, yo, oh my yo, god, the gun, yo, yo. Yo, son, put that, 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 that shit yo, away. Yo, yo, you like when you scared of something, nigga? Yo, yo, I'll take my shit out right now, yo. You know what I'm saying? Stay DL, man. Shows, shows, everything, yo, everything, yo. Yo, you heard about Dave? Oh, my God. Look at you, man. Yo, stay DL, man. Choke, no joke, I'm here, but I got a request for the Desperate Housewives, so I got to play it. Sorry. Choke, no joke, no joke. You know what it is. Know what it is. Tell this 10-year-old boy I'm getting some new dick or something. Check. Yeah. Choke, no joke. Know what it is. This go out to the Desperate Housewives in New York, Atlanta, 
Texas, California, Miami, Mississippi. I never thought in my life, not me. I fall for another man's wife. Oh God. I know that it sounds trite. I'm caught up with a desperate housewife. Yeah. I never thought in my life, not me. I fall for another man's wife. Oh God. I know that it sounds trite. I'm caught up with a desperate housewife. It was quick how it happened. We was just chatting, had a lot in common. I kept the laugh in the department in which a man was lacking. He was the king of the ship. Somehow I became captain. My swag on platinum. All my gold did just smack it. Then phone sex had happened. Things went left. I call it interest in sex. Something like Little Kim and you have. We knew if we met, it would be electric. Then the day came and we met. It was beyond my dream. A dream so sweet it made me scream. It was like a dream. Knew why he made a queen. I wanted to find Marty McFly and use that time machine. Run up in the church, create a scene. Object to that wedding and give him my ring. Like, uh. I never thought in my life, not me. I fall for another man's wife. Oh God, I know that it sounds trite. I'm caught up with a desperate housewife. Yeah. I never thought in my life, not me. I fall for another man's wife. Oh God, I know that it sounds trite. I'm caught up with a desperate housewife. I fell harder than a mother, my number one lover. Yo, under them covers was like no other. Had everything in common. I used to love her until he bugged her. Bitch, motherfucker. Device in the whip. Had to call it quits. Hit us like a brick. We both sick. Now she got a dilemma. Like Kelly the kids. I'm calm. Wish I never met the chick. Missing her seafood and our trips. Sex in the soul house, we did that shit. Sexing on the tent, we risked that shit. We both freaky as fuck, I miss my chick. Well, never mind, dare to take him off of mine. Kindred spirits, just the wrong time. Get divorced, you can hit my line. Until I repent, it's next lifetime. Like, I never thought in my life, not me. I fall for another man's wife. Oh God, I know that it sounds trite. I'm caught up with a desperate housewife. Yeah. I never thought in my life, not me. I fall for another man's wife. Oh God, I know that it sounds trite. I'm caught up with a desperate housewife. Joke, no joke. You already know. It's that south side of Eden Wall flow. We out of here. That was for my man, Terrence Brown. In the building, what up, what up, what up? Joke, no joke, y'all already know. We here, we here. What up, what up, what up? Elizabeth in the building. Nandy in the building. Rob in the building. Tony Brigitte. Black Kiggity. All right. Star C, what up? All about something. What up? <laughs> Shout out to Mon Dog. You already know. <laughs> so today, KVD went to court. I'm sure many of y'all know this. He didn't get a bail. They call for another hearing. Let's see what they talking about. That shit, it's surreal to see KVD in cuffs, boy. Mm. 
Wow. Got one thing to handle right here. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976 allows is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, common news report, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by the copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing nonprofit educational personal use tips to balance in favor of fair use. And I will be using this under fair use for news reporting. Okay. The record is like that, Mr. Davis is present in custody. We have evidence. We wanted to make sure that we felt comfortable that we had sufficient legal evidence. You know, if you're going to charge a person with murder, he has a right to believe that the system would only bring charges if there was sufficient legal evidence. So we waited until the point in time when we had that degree of evidence to move forward. We will continue to ask for a no bail setting because we believe under Nevada law and the evidence in this case that the proof is evident and the presumption is great that he will be convicted of first degree murder and that allows us to ask for a no bail setting. Yeah, this is going Don't don't it seem surreal to see KVD locked up, bro? Like, even though we seen him tell all those do those interviews and all that stuff, it still seems surreal, bro. What is Mo Cream talking about here? Let me see what more for you to about. You got any captions on this? Well, we know he ain't got no bail. I'm gonna sneeze. Holy who? Holy who? Holy who? Excuse me. Opreen, the rapper's stepbrother, wasn't in court Wednesday, but told the Associate Press that he's been following developments in the case from his home in Los Angeles. Even as he, even as he and his family are trying to manage our expectations, expectations, young black men often deal with delayed justice because we're often viewed as criminals, he said. So justice has been delayed for quite some time. In spite of all our eyes, all the attention, despite the celebrity of my brother. Davis was arrested last Friday near his home in suburban Henderson. A few hours later, a grand jury indicted an unsealed in Clark District Court charging him with the murder. Davis denied a request from the AP for an interview from jail, 
where he's being held without bond. Grand jurors also voted to add sentencing enhancements for the use of a deadly weapon and alleged gang activity. If Davis is convicted, that could add decades to his sentence. In Nevada, a person can be convicted of murder for helping another person commit that crime. Los Angeles-based attorney Edie Fowle told the AP in a brief phone call after the hearing that he is Davis' longtime personal lawyer and is helping him find a Nevada attorney. I've worked with him for more than two decades, Fowle said, but at this point, I do not have a comment. Davis had been a long known suspect in the case and uh, publicly admitted his role in the killing in the interviews ahead of his 2019 tell all memoir, Compton Street Legend. Hold on, yeah. Somebody said, why didn't his lawyer tell him to shut up all those years He, if he represented him? There's one thing that's for sure when living in that gangster lifestyle, he wrote, you already know that the stuff you put out is going to come back. You never know how or when, but there's never a doubt that it's coming. Davis' own comments revived the police investigation that led to the indictment. Police and prosecutors said in mid-July, Las Vegas police raided Davis' home drawing renewed attention to one of the hip hop music's most enduring mysteries. Prosecutors alleged Shakur's killing stemmed from a rivalry and competition for dominance in a music genre at the time was dubbed gangster rap. It pitted East Coast members of Bloods Gang sect, of the Blood Gang sect associated with rap music mogul Marion Shook Knight against West Coast members of a Crip set that Davis was said he led in Compton, California. Tension escalated in Las Vegas the night of September 7, 1996, when a brawl broke out between Shakur and Davis' nephew, Orlando Baby Lane Anderson, at the MGM Grand Hotel Casino following a heavyweight championship boxing match won by Mike Tyson. Night and Shakur went to the fight as did members of the Southside Crips. Prosecutor Mark said last week in the court, and Knight brought his honorage, which involves mob pyro gang members. After the casino brawl, Knight drove a BMW with your car in front of the passenger seat, within the front passenger seat. The car was stopped at a red light near the Las Vegas Strip when a Cadillac pulled up on the passenger side and gunfire erupted. Davis has said he was in the front passenger seat of the Cadillac and handed a 40 caliber handgun to his nephew in the back seat, from which he said the shots were, were fired. Shot multiple times, Shakur died a week later 
at age 25. Knight was grazed by a bullet fragment, but survived. Now 58, he is serving the 28 sentence for running over and killing the Compton businessman outside of a burger stand in January 2015. Among the four people in the Cadillac that night, Davis is the only one who is still alive. Anderson died in uh, May 1998 shooting in Compton. Before his death, Anderson denied involvement in Shakur's death. The other backseat passenger, DeAndre Big Dre, or Freaky Smith, died in 2004. The driver, Timmons Bubble Up Brown, died in 2015 in the shooting in Compton. Sheriff... I wonder how Dre died. Did all these dudes dry, die for gunfire, like gun violence? Sheriff Kevin McCalla, who oversees the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department, has acknowledged criticism that his agency was slow to investigate Shakur's killer. That was simply not the case, McHalla, McHalla Hills said. He called the investigation important to this police department. Yeah, right. Sure. You had to wait for a nigga to get on YouTube to talk about it, to do something about it. I need some tissue. Do damn. <laughs> All right, so we're going to get back to the uh the transcripts. Let's see. If you want to join the uh, the chat and you're not getting through, that means you're not subscribed. If you're not seeing yourself in the chat, that means you're not subscribed to the channel. It's a subscribe only show because there's too many goofies out here. I will open up the phones tonight. I will open the phones tonight after I get through some of this. Uh, Next testimony. Now, here's another thing. This dude, Dirty Rock, he did an interview with this girl, 
who who's this in let me see so let's see I don't want to play this uh, footage because there's too many bitch ass niggas on YouTube. But I'm going, let me find it real quick. Jesus. There's a, uh, uh, hold on a second. I'm gonna put y'all on mute one second. Hey, yo, this dude that they got to testify. Now, I'm going to give y'all the link so y'all y'all can check it out later, right? This is the dude that gave that testimony yesterday acting like he was in the car, right? This dude told told us in, in the grand jury transcript that he was in jail when Orlando and them, which call it, was in went to Vegas, right? He said he was in jail, right? In this interview right here, he said they wouldn't let him go. They wouldn't let him get in the car. He couldn't go. So I, he wasn't in jail. This nigga's lying, y'all. Then this nigga said, Suge held Tupac up why they why they shot him he was holding Tupac this thing is all cat let me see if I can find the, the timestamp so y'all can zoom to it
Yo, this kid is lying, y'all. He's lying, y'all. Y'all, y'all got, y'all got his whole, this whole interview he did. Dirt Rock from Southside Compton, Crip on Tupac Murder, Keefy D, Diddy, and more. It's two parts to it. This nigga is cat. Oh my god, bro. Let me give y'all part two too. Hold on. This nigga's lying, bro. Here go part two. This nigga is lying. Y'all get a chance. Watch these two interviews. And we gonna talk about them tomorrow when y'all get a chance. These are two interviews you gotta watch y'all homework. The same dude that gave that statement yesterday, uh, Dirty Rock, what's his name? Dirt Rock, what was his, his government name? Oh, it, it's four, it go up to four parts. One second, y'all. Got emergency text right here. But the good thing is we got about this dude is whatever he said in that, that grand jury testimony is going to be a contradiction to the testimony that we got right here.
why they gotta hit me with this right now. Them right now, we got things to do over here. All right, all right, let me pull up this, uh, these transcripts. And that, that dude is saying that Orlando did it. And now everybody changing their story saying Dre did it. <laughs> Wait, what is this? this Kaden. Yeah. Oh man. They 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 busted, bro. Cause this dude already uh testified that that Orlando was the shooter. He already told he told he been saying Orlando's shooter. Now he's saying Dre's the shooter. Somebody's coaching this dude, bro. I don't know who's coaching him, but somebody is coaching him. Okay, we went through this one. Let's go through this one here. Let's see. Oh, we got Reggie. <laughs> we got Reggie's testimony tonight, kids. <laughs> Nigga, you testifying, Reggie? Or you being a good witness? Which one is it, nigga? Look, y'all. Lil Bird. That's your middle name, nigga? Little Bird? 
<laughs> you want to get a little burn? We got Reggie's motherfucking testimony tonight, y'all. <laughs> oh, the nigga that wasn't even there. The nigga that didn't even show up when niggas was jumping niggas. That, that nigga ain't even show up to help niggas. We got Reggie's testimony. You you over there tsunami snitching again, nigga? <laughs> Little bird. <laughs> Little bird. That's my new that's your new name now, Little Bird. Shout out to my man Little Bird. Yeah, burn your ass in a minute. Exhibits is photograph, aerial map, photograph. Nigga, I'm sorry, y'all. I got to skip the other person and go straight to Reggie, yo. We don't want no appetizers on this one. We got Donna, whoever Donna is. We gonna come back to Donna. The witness is Dean O'Kelly. All right, so this first person is Dean O'Kelly, and he's a homicide cold case detective. We're going straight to Reggie, God damn it! Hold on. <laughs> Let's see what Reggie had to say. Oh, you over here testifying, nigga? I thought you was a gangster. <laughs> we got the paperwork on Reggie. We got Reggie's paperwork. We having a paperwork party for Reggie. <laughs> <coughs> oh, here we go. Nigga, you in the summer jam screen, little bird. Here we go, y'all. We got little bird. May, oh, man, man, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got to go on Instagram and tell niggas they got the tune in right now. I can't go live on Instagram. That's okay. I got to let them know. They got to come see this. Little bird. Please make sure y'all forward this to somebody. Joke, no joke. I'm live with Little Burns' testimony. You know, Little Burn, just Little, Little Burn. <laughs> Reggie, Reginald Little Burn Wright Jr. Yeah, we got his testimony. We got his paperwork. Paperwork. We got him snitching on Keefe D. We got his paperwork. We got his paperwork. <laughs> we having a paperwork party for the, the dirty cop. Come on in, y'all. We got paperwork. Hit that link. We got the paperwork for the dirty cop. <laughs> this nigga said called nigga snitches. Well, we got your paperwork, buddy. We got the paperwork. We got Reggie's paperwork, paperwork, 
You get the paperwork. And they just choked, choked the snitch, choked the snitch. What is you right here, nigga? Testifying for the prosecution, nigga. <laughs> Before you say, oh, I was, for the, I was, I was testifying for the, for the defense. You know, for Marl James for the defense, nigga. You told on another nigga that he threw the gun at his feet. Hey, y'all, we got Reggie testifying for the prosecution. Mr. Call everybody in the world a snitch, right? Well, this time he's testifying for the prosecution, not the defense and telling on uh, Zeke that he threw the gun at Bunchy feet. Yeah. Well, this time he's telling on Keefe D, all right? He's a good witness. He He's not, no, he ain't no teller. He's just a good witness. But the nigga wasn't around when Tupac and them was get, getting in that fight. Nigga wasn't around when niggas was getting shot up. Shot up. But he was the head of security. Who's hiring this nigga for security? Tupac is dead for this nigga being head of security. Huh. Hit the link in my bio. I'm live right now. Can't go live on Instagram. Holla at me. This is going to be good. Now we're going to see what Reggie got to say. This is going to be good. Woo, I'm excited. Now, y'all know we got so much video of Reggie telling different stories. This is going to be interesting to see what he got to say in this. All right, now I got my you Instagram. Notify my Instagrammers. Okay, let's get to it. I need my theme music. <laughs> Woo, here we go, y'all. Let's get to it. I will be taking calls after this. I will be taking calls after this. Do you understand the advisement? Yes, ma'am. Please state your first and last name. Spell them both for the record. Yes, ma'am. D. Reginald Little Bird Wright Jr. D. I. R. T. Y. C. O. P. Can you can you spell your name again, sir? D. I. R. T. Y. C O P A K A G A N 
G S T R. <laughs> That's Reginald Little Burn Wright Jr. Little Burn. And I'm a junior. Haven't been sworn in, blah, 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 blah. Good morning, sir. How are you doing today, sir? Good. Where did you grow up? I grew up initially in Los Angeles, the Watts area of Los Angeles. About the second grade, I guess that would make me about seven or eight. My family moved to the city of Compton. City of Compton. And in the city of Compton, what did your father do? My father was a, he was a police officer in my childhood. And he rise to the rank of captain for the city of Compton Police Department. And what's your father's name? Reginald Little Bird, right, senior? And did he work for a particular unit during your time as a youth in Compton? Well, initially, you know, like most patrol officers, and he eventually, and for a long time of his career, and he eventually, and for a long time of his career, was over the gang or an officer in the gang unit. Then later, he supervised the gang and homicide unit for the city of Compton. All right. Now, when you were growing up, did you live next to other or interact with other known gang members or people who had become gang members? Leading, your honor. Yeah, this thing is leading early, boy. These motherfuckers don't work together. Yes, sir. To be honest, the main area that I grew up was the Mall Pie Rules or the Looters Park area. However, the city of Compton is one of the most unique cities. It's only eight miles wide, and so you pretty much kind of know or have associated with a lot of other gangs and guys from the other neighborhoods because of the park and recreation, which I was real active in growing up, playing Little League baseball, the Pop Warner football, and basketball. Did you know somebody by the name of Marion Knight when you were growing up? Yes. Yes, sir, I did. Did you know somebody named a David Mack growing up? Huh? Did you know somebody by the name of David Mack growing up? Since you knew everybody was only eight miles. Oh, you ain't know David Mack, though, huh? Okay. All right, buddy. And was there another name that Mr. Knight went by? Yes, sir. Suge Knight. We had initially met. Oh, and how do you know Mr. Wright? Mr. Knight. We had initially met. He's a year older than me in grade, in school grades. And so I would have been a second grader. He was a third grader. Just acquaintance, just guys that grew up in the same neighborhood that was going to the same elementary school. Did you ultimately play ball with Mr. Knight? Yes, sir. Should Knight and I, and I'm sure there, wait, sh yes, sir. So Should Knight and I, and I'm sure there was a few other kids from our neighborhood went to other school district outside of Compton Unified School District, which was Linwood Unified School District. And that's where we, we play high school football from the 11th grade and 12th grade. I had went to Catholic school my ninth and 10th grade year, a school in Los Angeles called Vibum Dai High School. Oh, you was a Catholic school kid. You was a good kid, Reggie. Reggie, you was a good kid. And you turned to a goddamn gangster. I was wider instead of... I thought I was going to play basketball. I was wider instead of taller. All right, I'm going to fast forward a little bit. At some point, did you join the Compton Police Department? Yes, sir. And tell us about that. So I started attending Cal State University of Long Beach State College, and this is in 1994. But I got hired on a jailer while I was going to school. 
a civilian employee job as a civilian jailer for the city of Compton Police Department. Oh, you was locking niggas up too? Oh, this nigga here. Yeah. Once I finished school, I was allowed to, well, I applied to become a police officer when I was at the age of 22. In 1989, I went through the police academy, but I wasn't hired officially as a police officer until 1990. And what kind of work did you do when you were a police officer with Compton? I was a patrol officer that worked the streets. During that time, we didn't, it was only a few officers in the gang unit. It was also, my father was a sec sergeant at the time, and he had two officers that worked under him during that time. Tim Brennan, who's no longer with us, he passed about a year or two ago, and I call him Bobby, but his name is Robert Ladd that worked under his unit. And they were pretty much the gang officers for the city. Now, at some point while you were working in patrol, did you start moonlighting or working security in order to increase your money coming in? Yeah. After I made probation, to be honest, in 1990, when I started. 1990, okay. And did a lot of moonlighting because I was still young. And so I did a lot of work working, but eventually started working for Death Row Records. In 1990? Hold on, let's see if he gives a year when he started working in 19 in, in uh death row. Because remember, he said if Rafael Perez and David Mack worked there before 94, then he might not know. But after 94, they wasn't around, right? So let's see if he worked from 90 before 1994. To death at death row because we got him on camera saying that all right and to understand a little bit about moonlighting generally before we get into death row was it common for patrol officers or was it allowed for patrol officers to moonlight as security when they were off duty yes we had a procedure a lot of us follow but they didn't enforce it too much but if you got caught doing something then it got enforced. But we had to put in what we would call the work permit, which meant you had to get permission from the police chief or maybe a commander. I forget at the time, to be honest, to be approved to work that particular job. But they but they allowed us to work pretty much anything that we put in for. So before you were, before we get to the death row moonlighting, what was the other kind of moonlighting that you would do? Man, I was moving, but <laughs> nigga, I was moving that bud, nigga, all the way to Memphis, nigga. You stupid. I don't say that in here. That's just me ad living. Um, oh, okay. I worked the nightclubs, comedy clubs. We had a hotel in the city of Compton. It was called the Ramada Inn. It's a casino now. And so I worked there on one or on one or two nights a week working in this comedy club or in the hotel in general. Trucking companies, I worked on a few production sets. And what were you supposed to do when you're moonlighting? What role were you doing? Mainly I was there on the production sets. It was because movie sets, they like to film in Compton and do a lot of things to get actual on sets. They like to do a lot of things to get actual on sets and video shoots and stuff like that. So it was mainly to protect the equipment because, you know, you have all that expensive equipment out there. They wanted you to watch that. And also to maybe keep the gang members away because they like to pressure the production companies into putting them into in the scene. They have a sense of entitlement where you are in a... They have a sense of entitlement when you in our neighborhood. One of us going to be in there representing, you know, in this set or this shoot. Now, were you familiar with the area gang members at the time? And, and were they familiar with you? 
Our police department was only 130 to 160 unit. I mean, squad. My father, Reginald Wright Sr., was actually real popular in the city. And so I was Little Reggie. And I kind of wanted to be like him, like my father, and then to the gang initially. I mean, I mean later, not initially. I was a little different, but eventually, yes, that grew where I was kind of known as, well, with a lot of the gangs and gang members in the city. Now, had you mentioned death row, before we talk about what you did at death row, can you tell us what death row actually was? Death row records was, death row records was a music, a record label that had some one or two R&B singers on it, but mainly were gangster rap music. And to your knowledge, who ran Death Row Records? Shug, well, Marion Hugh Knight is his name, but we call him, or I refer to him really as Suge Knight. He was the CEO of the company. And what would you call him when you interacted with him? Shug. Shug? Yeah. So, we can just call him Shug. Okay. So did there ever come a point where the idea of you moonlighting for Shug came up? It act, it eventually happened in like 94. And how did that come about? Well, my father, Reginald Wright Sr., had gotten some intel that some of the guys that were working for him, because he had he was instrumental, may not have been a smart move finding out later, but at that time of hiring guys that were just getting out of prison and giving them jobs. And by saying that, you mean Suge was hiring people just out of prison and giving them jobs? Yes, sir. That he grew up with and from the city of Compton and other cities. Yeah, I could say other places as well, Long Beach and the Los Angeles area. but. He was real instrumental in doing that. That was a big thing that he wanted to do or was proud of, to be honest. And so my father got some intel that a few of the guys that was working for him were planning on coming after him and extorting him, robbing him for money. Who told your father that, Reggie? Who told your father that, Reggie? Or did he just make that up so he could get in Shook's pocket? Yo, them niggas going to rob you. You should hire us so we can protect you. He knew he, he knew he and I had a relationship, and he told me, hey, I need you to reach out and get a hold of Shook. To this day, I don't remember how I did it, but I know I eventually got to him. And we met the three of us. Oh, now you got your memories bad. Your memory's bad now. Okay. And so when you say the three of us, who are you talking about? Myself, Reginald Senior, and Mr. Knight, or Suge Knight. And what happened at this meeting? Pretty much him saying, man, some of the guys that you are working for are planning on maybe, you know, robbing you and taking advantage of you for some money that he had got this information. He laughed it off. Oh, man, they all happy. You know, they won't do nothing to me. I ain't worried about that. But that's why you all need to be over there working with me, looking out. Myself, I had just recently had a traffic accident. This is not why I'm like, this is not why I'm like this currently. And I had messed up my right ankle. So, and plus, I was 27, 26 of age. It was in my mid, it was in the mid 90s. The atmosphere and everything was what I, I wasn't married. I wanted to be around for the lack of a better word. You was a groupie. To say you was a groupie, man. And you wanted to be around the rappers. It's fair to say it's fair to say it's a very, at that time, gangster rap was taken off, particularly in Compton. Fair to say? Yes, sir. And with that brought 
a lot of money, girls, and a lot of things associated with fame? Correct. And, I mean, I sit on the 50-yard line of the Super Bowl stuff that I hadn't done, you know, just from being a cop that I was exposed to. So it's fair to say you were attracted to the lifestyle that your acquaintance, Suge Knight, had developed. Yes, sir. Like I said, he was a fucking groupie. It's him and his dad, oh, these niggas going to rob you. Yo, give us a job. Yeah, all right. And so did your father think that, did your father decide to work for Death Row Records? He right there told him, I can't do that, the position I'm in. To be honest, most of the guys that's working for you, I'm trying to investigate. You know, inv investigating them on open cases right now. I'm trying to put them in jail. I wouldn't do that. So your father was hard. So your father was a hard no when it came to. So listen to this shit right here, y'all. Reggie's father is investigating the niggas that's working for death row. He tells Shook, yo, these niggas going to rob you, this, that, and over. The same niggas that he's investigating. So let my son come work with you because he's I'm investigating these niggas and I want my son to come work with you because I'm investigating these niggas. So was Reggie working undercover? Ain't that a conflict of interest? Reggie Farmers is investigating the niggas that work for Suge. And Suge hires Reggie to work for him while his father's investigating the niggas at death row. How do you trust this guy? Buntry, Mob James, And all these guys is over at death row. They father is investigating them. And Reggie's uh, Marv James' best friend. You can't make this shit up, bro. What? I don't understand Marv James, bro. I don't understand that, brother. I don't understand that, brother. I don't understand that, brother. For a brother that posed to be a stone-cold gangster, why is he running around with Reggie, yo? And hey, Shook. Got to know that hey, Shook. But he loves Reggie, bro. Yo. I don't understand, Mom James. I just don't. I really don't. I don't understand how he could be mad at Shook. And, and, and I just don't get it, bro. I just don't get it. Yeah, it was a hard no. It was like, however, he even told him that. I wasn't even ready for it, you know, to be honest. And he recommended a lieutenant that had an ownership in the security company that he knew. That Suge knew his, you know, some of his family ties to that and said, you might want to talk to him, which he did. His name was Danny Sneed, and he was a lieutenant. And he eventually was the boss as far as putting paperwork and contacting the security company, which was a private security security company called called cold for security and having them kind of do stuff where i was like the street supervisor or whatever where i would always be with them when they needed like special events or they went to places it wasn't like an everyday bodyguard thing it would just been there at the video shoot or when they go to the mtv awards or something like that so I think we skipped a step. So you ultimately, so you ultimately decide that you would moonlight for Shug and Death Row? Yes, sir. Okay. And despite your father thinking it wasn't the greatest idea, you decided you wanted to be a part of it. Well, to be in charge of it, someone else was in charge. And then so at this point, you're moonlighting, like you're you were mentioning. Bodyguarding for Suge 
every now and again, going to events at that point. Yes, sir. Why is this nigga working for Sugar? His father's investigating death row. Who, yo, bro, do y'all? His father's investigating death row and Reggie works there. And all these niggas trust Reggie? Yo, bro. I bet you some of them niggas is just hearing this for the first time. That his father was investigating death row. And Reggie is working there? Yo, bro. Oh my God, yo! And then at some point, you do. And at some point, do you suffer another physical injury that causes you to resign from the Compton PD? Your Honor, leading, leading. Yes, sir. Can you just brief tell us briefly what your injury was? Yes, I had a traffic accident where I re-injured the right ankle that I had it. I had a traffic accident where I re-injured the right ankle that I had where I couldn't. My ankle would just swell up and just by standing on it for an hour or two. Flat foot. And so I knew at that point I wasn't capable when the city also knew I wasn't capable of being a patrol officer for the city of Compton. You know anymore? So did you take a medical retirement from the Compton PD? Yes, sir. And then after you take the medical retirement from Compton PD, what do you do? I go stand on my feet over at Death Row Records. And I'm on my feet for hours and hours and hours at Death Row. And I'm taking Compton's fucking medical leave money. Taking a medical retirement from a broken ankle, a swollen ankle. Oh, my God. This nigga was getting the check from Compton and getting a check from Death Row. I became really more involved with Death Row Records Security and also opened my own private security company. And I'm sorry, about what month and year did you resign? I resigned in, well, it didn't become official until about 1996. So this nigga was a cop. For two years while working at death row, y'all. From 94 to 96, he was still a cop working for death row, bro. However, January 1996, however, I was off about a year, you know, going through the whole process in my company. And that probably started in April of 1995, where I was more around. Okay, so there's like a bureaucratic process that takes place from when you kind of make that decision to where it becomes official at Compton Police Department. For the retirement, going through the workers' comp and all that, it took about a year. But in April of 1995, you were working on setting the right way. Was that the name of that? Protective Services. Right Way Protective Services? And that was your security company? Yes, sir. And who was the primary client for Right Way? Death Row Records. And what would you do for Death Row Records? I had a security guard at the office space that they had. I had two at the recording studio that they had. And whenever any of the artists went out on promotion events or stuff like that, I had either one or two officers with them. Snoop Dogg was a popular or the biggest rap artist on the label and Dr. Dre at the time. Those two, Dre pretty much only used my security when he went publicly. However, Snoop had two guys with him at all times because he had just went through a situation with his own case. One of those cops with Snoop case was Kevin Gaines, right? 
<laughs> was it K didn't Kevin Gaines do security for Snoop? Oh, that ain't come through death row. That was through Sharita. That was through Sharita Knight that Kevin Gaines worked for Snoop Dogg, right? Am I lying? Am I lying? Oh, okay. Okay, so let's break it down a little bit. So you had a security at the office space. Where was the office space? The office space at that time, well, we went through three during we went through three during this period, but on Wilshire and Westwood, the Murdoch Plaza is what it was called. And then we had an office 9171, which was the Larry Flint building on Wilshire. And then later on, but that came after 96, a building 8200 Wilshire. That was the he- that was like the headquarters or the office space for the people that were really the professional people. I called them like the staff, you know, the PR person, the art department, the accounting firm was pretty much outside. But we had a later on had on later on had an on-site bookkeeper, a receptionist, and Suge Knight's assistant. So people weren't necessarily talent on the, yes, sir. So you had an office space where you had, you know, the more nine to five workers and the professional, the staff, that type of thing. Yes, sir. And then you had the studio where more record producers, artists would go to, you know, create the music for Death Row Records. Yes, sir. And that was in Tarzana, California. Uh, <coughs> a studio called Can-Am. C-A-N-A-M. Can-Am is what it's called. Recording studios in Tarzana, California. And you said there would be security there? You also mentioned a couple of the best-known artists at this time, and we're talking about 95 right now. Yes, sir. On Death Row Records, it was Snoop Dogg and proper name Calvin Brodus. Yes, sir. And then you had Dr. Dre as well. Yes, sir. Andre Young. And also a huge artist at the time. Is that fair to say? Yes, sir. And producer. And he was also the co-owner. Okay. He was also the co-owner? Yes, sir. And then Suge have regular security with him and then Suge and they would Suge have regular security with him <coughs> I would be with him a lot of the time except for Vegas when niggas had a big ass brawl and fight and when he got shot up I for some reason I was not around for some strange reason the one time he needed me the most I was not around Sidebar, that's not in the transcript. I would be with him a lot of time, a lot of the time, probably at that point, about 60% of his life, of his day at that point, but not 100%. But I wouldn't call myself security because he was a lot bigger than me a lot stronger than me, but I would be with him. But he also had somewhat of an honorage, which, I mean, was like homeboys that would be with him that maybe three or four. So when he rode, he would generally be by himself in the car, but it was always be about 85 to 90% of his life, maybe two other people with him. Now, You had talked about homeboys. I assume you're talking about people who were affiliated from the neighborhood. Yo, bro, Yana, leading leading witness, he can know these niggas from the record label, the the music industry, this, that, leading, leading. Yes, sir. The gentlemen that I spoke of that had just got out of prison, that he may be giving jobs to and stuff like that. Generally, those were the types. Excuse me. And what kind of 
Did Shug himself associate with a particular neighborhood? Yes, sir. Oh, you snitching, Reggie. Reggie, you snitching. What's that? Initially, the bigger one is called Eastside Pyrus. So Eastside, but the older gentlemen in that neighborhood where we grew up were the Ludus Park Pyru, and then it broke off to the smaller size. The four or five streets in our area we grew up, they called themselves Mar Pyrus, M-O-B, Pyrus, P-I-R-U. Yeah, spell it for him, Reggie. Did the mob stand for anything? Yes, sir. What does it stand for? Members of the Bloods. Oh, Reggie, you snitching, Reggie. Reggie, you, I never knew that. I never knew that. Mob stand for Members of the Bloods. Reggie, you telling, Reggie. Reggie, you giving them the, the street code, Reggie. You just told Shug Knight need to shut up. He need to stick to the coat. Wait, are you being a cop here or you are you the, the drug dealer nigga that just came home from jail? Which one are you here right now? Because I don't I don't want, you know, I get confused. I don't know which Reggie we talking about. The drug dealer? Or the the, the, the fat, fat foot, slow, swollen foot, flat foot cop? Or the or, or the security guard? Which one are we talking to right now? Because I don't want to say you telling if you just, you the civilian now. If you the civilian, the cop, you know, not the dirty cop that you became, the civilian cop. Like, are you, which one are you right now, Reggie? Are you, are you neighborhood right now? Which one are you, Reggie? Because you just said Suge needed to shut up. He dirty and muddying up the case that you said and testified in. We got the paperwork. This is the paperwork, Reggie. We see the paperwork. So it's fair to say that the Mall Pyro was a blood affiliated gang. Yes, sir. Wait a minute. Dig Shook himself associate with a particular neighborhood yes sir the mobs this nigga here is dirty so it's fair to say that mar pyro was a blood affiliated gang yes sir so i have to ask so you're a former police your father is the head of the gang unit and you're working security and hanging out with Mr. Knight? Thank you. That's what we want to know. Why? Or were you undercover? Yes. And then Mr. Knight is also around. And then Mr. Knight also has around him active blood mob pot. Wait. And then Mr. Knight also has around him active mob pyro members. And is also affiliated with Maul Pyru himself? Yes, sir. How does that work? Please tell us, Reggie. How does that work? Your father's investigating these niggas and you work for them? And Shug is a blood affiliated and you not. Y'all trust Reggie. And y'all trust Reggie. Y'all mother act. Y'all man. I don't understand some of y'all niggas. I yo, hey, Mob James, you see this, bro? Mob James, are you reading this, bro? Did you see this, Mob James? You couldn't have. I should not see Mob James with Reggie no more after this, bro. And then Mr. Knight also has around him active Mar Pyru members and is affiliated with Mar Pyru himself. Yes, sir. How does that work? Well, number one, because contrary to what people believe, especially back then, they had a little bit of respect for police. Bro, what niggas 
Not the niggas that made motherfucking fuck the police. Not, not, no, 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 nigga. No. The mall pie rules have respect for the police. Hey, yo. Hey, yo, Mob James. Mob James. Y'all niggas was respecting the police, bro. Mob James. Really? Mob James, y'all would fuck the police. Compton was respecting the police. Wow. 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 Well, number one, because of contrary to what people believe, especially back then, they had a little bit of respect for police. Now the kids hate the police. The niggas in Compton had respect for the police. The niggas that made fuck the police. And Reggie, you are working with death row. Ruthless records made F the police, bro. Dre was not rocking with no police, nigga. What? I guess you didn't hear straight out of Compton on niggas for life. Maybe I don't think he never even heard doggy style. Niggas fuck with the police in Compton. Ma Pie Rules is fucking with the police in Compton. Reggie. Now the kids hate the police. But back then, they kind of had a little respect. So it wasn't like we were bosom buddies or hanging or anything. But I was also their childhood friend. Most of them I knew really before I knew Shook. We all went to school, the same schools, the same junior high schools. Now we didn't go to the same high school because they were in Compton Unified School District and I was at Linwood Unified School District, but we all knew each other. Did you know David Mack? You knew him, right? You knew you knew everybody, right? But you didn't know David Mack. Sure. Okay. I don't want to take a lot of credit for it, but I got really, I got to, I don't want to take a lot of credit for it, but I got to really say it was because of the relationship or maybe the fear that they have of my father, Reginald Sr., that they knew, you know, if something happened or was disrespectful to Reginald Sr., something like that, then he could bring more law down on them or stern the hand down than maybe me being retired and not so high on the totem pole. There you go. We Now you, now you talking. Who daddy was the real gangster? Yeah. I worked at death row because they knew not to mess with me because of my daddy. What KVD said? Reggie Senior pulled up. KVD, you better not put your hands on my son. Y'all remember that? Y'all remember that? Imagine working at death row and you a Mar Piru and you got this nigga. In here, his daddy over here investigating us, and we know it. That's some dangerous shit. But I really do believe they had respect for him because he was really the type of cop that was for community policing, in my opinion. And for a lot of his, you know, his chief and all of them, they would attest to that. Yeah, this is why Compton PD got shut down because that shit was so dirty. Motherfuckers stealing out the evidence locker like crazy. Cops getting caught with two bricks of cocaine in a personal locker. Really? They had to shut that goddamn precinct down. And for a lot of his, you know, his chief and all, and all, of them would attest to that. He was different. We learned later in life in law enforcement, you got to be more community orientated where in the early 90s, police was a little different in my opinion. 
So part of it is that your dad and you grew up in the neighborhood, so you were known to all the folks in the neighborhood. Pretty much, yes. And then also the fact that your dad was a lieutenant in a gang unit in Compton may have had an effect on how people treated you as well. That's how I perceived it. Yes, sir. All right. So as part of being security for Suge and Death Row or running the security for Death Row, did you become aware of a rivalry with Bad Boy Records? Your Honor, leading, leading. Yes, sir. Can you tell us about that rivalry? Well, you want me to go to it from the beginning of the war, where I believe it started? The war? What war, Reggie? Oh, Reggie ain't snitching, y'all? Reggie ain't snitching, y'all? Even Vlad won't even go talk to these people. Vlad is real and in, in, in Reggie. Vlad said, I'm not telling. I'm sending my lawyers, nigga. I ain't Reggie. Vlad is keeping it real than Reggie. Right? Vlad is more black and hip hop than Reggie. <laughs> this nigga Vlad got you looking bad, Reggie. Reggie, you know this is the prosecution that you testifying for, right? So you can't tell that people later. Oh, no, nah, that's just for the grand jury. They, no, nigga, it's the prosecution, nigga. You are getting Keith E.D. You got Keith E.D. indicted. You got Keith E.D. indicted. <laughs> you gave help, brother. You out here testifying for the prosecution. <coughs> so you can't run that. Oh, I, 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 I testified for the defense in, in, in Bungie's case. You know, I was, I was, nigga, yo, Reggie, you are a good witness. You are a great, no, nigga, you are the best witness. Man, you, this, you are showing by example, nigga. You the good witness, bro. I don't know, I got the burps like crazy. But you are a good witness. Re no, you are a great witness, Reggie. Oh, Reggie. You are you gonna tell them where the war bill again? The war. This nigga try to get my nigga Suge Knight in the Rico case. This dirty, dirty, dirty ass cop. Can you tell us about that rivalry? Well, you want me to go from the beginning of the war where I believe it started? From what you know how it started. Well, what I really believe. And it's kind of a little story. So initially, Suge Knight and the owner of Bad Boy Records, which is Sean Puffy Combs, they had a decent relationship, a working relationship, even though he was from New York and Death Row was based in Los Angeles. But New York was kind of known where the big record labels were. Even though our record label was based in Beverly Hills, that kind of was over us, which even though our record label was based in Beverly Hills, that kind of was over us, which was in the scope. But their parent company was in New York as well. So we went to New York about, I could say from 95 when I came around, we probably was in New York at least eight to 10 days. They got, you came around 94. We probably was in New York at least eight to 10 days of a month out that way. So they had a decent relationship and so Suge allowed them to use some samples from this album that he called The Chronic. Okay, I'm just going to break that down a little bit. So you will go out to New York as security with Death Row Records and Suge quite a bit during this 95 time. Yes, and it was mainly on business trips. And so that often it would be mainly just myself, Suge, usually a female companion, maybe two of his homeboys. They would vary. And you talked about Suge giving samples to Puff. Can you explain to us what that means? 
Yeah, sample songs are generally songs that have been out already that were pretty much successful that artists like to put in there to make us think of, or for some reason, it's like that they had already been out and been successful. Allow another rapper or artist to come up and use that song. So it's like beats. It would be the same beat or music or melody on the song, and then you would lend that beat or melody to another rapper and they would wrap their own rhymes over it. Correct, sir. So what you're saying is Suge has such a good relationship with Mr. Combs that he would even lend out or let him have beats and music from a successful record so that Mr. Combs could use it for that, for his artists? Yes, sir. Okay. And is it fair to say that typically some changes – and is it fair to say that typically some charges for something like that, charges a fair amount or deny it, don't allow it to happen. So to you, what was the indicative of the relationship between Suge and Puff at the time? So they had a great working relationship, in my opinion, at the time. So did that change at all? And so then... So now, Shook, there's this rapper by the name of Tupac Shakur. Yeah, Tupac. Well, yeah, I guess the name is Tupac Shakur, and he's in prison. Now you don't know who Tupac Shakur is, brother? You don't know Tupac's name. Here you go. Where is he in prison? So you mean to tell me? Reggie, that Suge and Puff Beef started with Tupac? Really? So did that change at all? And so then, so now Suge, there's this rapper by the name of Tupac Shakur. Yeah, Tupac. Well, yeah. I guess the name is Tupac Shakur, and he's in prison. Where is he in prison? In New York, and he needed some financial help. Initially, that's all Suge. His wife at the time reached out to Suge and asked Suge for some assistance. Whose wife reached out to Suge? Tupac's. So Tupac's wife reached out to Suge Knight for financial assistance. Yeah, to say, hey, I'm kind of having it rougher here. Some of my people out here needed some help. And, you know, can you help me out? Because they had dealings in the past. And Suge was like, okay. So Suge, myself, David Kenner went to the prison. And who's David Kenner? He was the quasi. He was really an attorney, the company's attorney, but kind of had a lot of, business manager for death row. So he was, he had a law degree, but he was acting as a business manager for death row? For Suge Knight, yeah. They were kind of like, they had a close relationship. So you three are going out to New York. What was the purpose of going out to New York? Initially, he was going out there to check on him and to talk to him. Talk to who? Mr. Shakur. Okay. And so during that conversation, it came up that, hey, you know, he's doing bad. His record label, who was also our distributor, Interscope Records, pretty much was done with him and felt like they had given him too much money. Advanced him too much money, and he was in the hole. And he had the number one album on the charts at the time, but they was like, hey, because of all your legal bills and stuff like that, we're not giving you any more money. And this is what Mr. Shakur was relaying to you and Mr. Knight. I wasn't there, Mr. Knight. But what I was, I wasn't there, Mr. Knight. But what I know from hearing Mr. Kenner and Mr. Knight talk about when they came back to the car while I was in the car. And so I'm just going to instruct the jury that this is for effect on listener and to explain 
the subsequent actions of both Mr. Wright Jr. and Mr. Knight. This is not for the truth of the matter asserted. Does anybody have any issue with that? Seeing no hands? Okay. All right. So you become aware that Mr. Shakur has fine is so you become aware that Mr. Shakur was having financial problems and needed financial assistance while he was in prison in New York. Yes, sir. And then Mr. Knight decide. Did you observe Mr. Knight making a decision, make a decision to do anything to assist Mr. Shakur? He came back in the car and he said, hey. And I heard him get on the phone with Jimmy Iovine, who was the president or CEO of Interscope Records. And they had a conversation about how can I get him, you know, get him some money and I can assume responsibility for his contract because he was still under contract with Interscope Records. They eventually made a deal where they assigned his rights to Suge Knight. And Suge Knight brought his mother a house while he was in prison and was giving them financial support. This is between May and June of 1995. So during this time, they trying to figure out, David Kennan assured Mr. Knight that he could get, he possibly could get Mr. Shakur out on the appeal bond. And eventually they worked out a deal where they got $1.5 million up to get him out on the appeal bond. But then there was a award show. But then there was a music and award, award show. So before we get to the music award show, so it was your understanding that having been around Mr. Knight all this time and dealing with him 60% of his life, essentially during this time. Yes. That Mr. Uh, Mr. Knight obtained up to... Mr. Up Knight obtained and put up $1.5 million as an appeal bond to release Mr. Shakur from custodial status in New York prison. Yes, sir. And now I'm going to, and it was a combination of other entities that also put up money. Yeah? Okay. So during this time, while Mr. Shakur is still in prison, then an accident occurred that a public incident occurred that demonstrated some kind of rivalry between Mr. Knight and Mr. Combs of the Bad Boy Records. Yo, come on, bro. Come on, bro. Leading. Yes, sir. So what happened? Mr. Shakur is still not out of prison, but things are beginning to work. You know how the justice system works. You being assured that the wheels are turning. There was a big urban hip hop music awards show called the Source Awards. It was a big popular magazine at the time. They had an award show in New York and Mr. Knight came out there and he had his artists performing. And he put a cardboard picture of Mr. Shakur in one of the jail cells because he had all the, we consider like death row, all his artists on death row, which means an inmate. And so he had them in the cell and that was announcing to everybody that Mr. Shakur is now with death row. People not really catching it. And again, you know a lot more than, you know, most people do. So to explain, so to explain it is, so to explain it is there a performance at this award show? So so to explain it, is there in the performance at this award show? I'm sorry. Yes. So they were performing and that's when they had him on the stage because each one of them came out of a cell when they performed they're part of the song. And so part of the set, there's a display with what looks like a jail, like a bunch of jail cells. Yes, sir. 
And then on one of the displays is Mr. Shakur being painted or it was like a cardboard cutout. Okay. Of him in one of the jail cells. Yeah. So people probably saw it, didn't know, but I knew it. I know it. You know, because I'm involved. Yeah. Well, that was supposedly meant Mr. Knight gets up on the stage. What that supposedly meant. Mr. Knight gets up on the stage. He wins an award for best executive of the year or best album of the year, something like that. And he gets up there and publicly makes a statement disrespecting Puffy Combs. So are you aware whether or not this award show is televised or not televised? It was. So Mr. Knight is on the stage at this award show that's being televised. And it's fair to say that he's talk take and it's fair to say that he's taking verbal shots at Mr. Combs. Yes. And that was the beginning. And that was the beginning then of the rivalry. So that night we go out to an after party and Mr. Combs approached Mr. Knight at this club called the Tunnel in New York. Were you there? I was there, standing right there. And he approached him like, hey, what's going on? Why are you dissing me in front of everybody like that? And they and they had heated, you know, and they had heated, you know, words of it or an exchange of words, and they walked away. Everybody went, you know, their own separate ways. This is August. And the reason why I know the date is because, you know, my memory and stuff because it was around my birthday, which is August the 5th. So it was like either the 3rd or the 6th of August when this took place. So then Mr. Knight goes to Atlanta. I wasn't with him. Thank God I missed the plane. But <clears throat> so let's, since you weren't there, let me ask it this way. After Mr. Knight returned, did you see Mr. Knight? after he returned from Atlanta. <coughs> oh, from Atlanta, or mean, you mean from New York? From Atlanta. So after this incident that you talk about, did you see him after? Yes, sir. Did you come to learn that one of Mr. Knight's close associates was killed in Atlanta? Leading. Leading. You ain't even let Reggie tell you about Atlanta. Y'all just getting it out there. Yes, sir. Who did Mr. Knight blame for his associate getting killed in Atlanta? Yo, bro. They didn't even talk about what happened in Atlanta. A friend that was close to associate of Mr. Combs, Mr. Sean Combs, Puffy Combs. So Mr. Knight communicated to you that he believed Mr. Combs was responsible, if not directly, indirectly, for the murder of his good friend in Atlanta. Yes, sir. And Mr. Knight was in Atlanta when this occurred? Yes, sir. So is it fair to say, based on your observation, this only escalated the rivalry between Bad Boy Records and Death Row Records? Yes, sir. Yo, bro. Reggie, you tell him, Reggie. All they doing right here was with Reggie is trying to establish that there was a rivalry between Bad Boy and Death Row, and ultimately Tupac got killed because Keithy D and them was rolling with Bad Boy. This is what they're trying to establish with this fucking testimony right here. Reggie, you're a dirty nigga, bro. You are a dirty nigga. You dirty, bro. You dirty. You dirty, bro. You dirty. No, you're a good witness. My bad, I'm sorry. You're a good witness. As security, would you have to, well, Go to events where Bad Boy may have also do security for Death Row where Bad Boy 
would also be there after the Atlanta incident? Okay, that would have been my responsibility. Yes? Generally, like I said, I literally, it was an early morning flight. I missed the flight. So I generally was supposed to have been there. People always tell me it was God looking out for me by keeping me there. But there's a little bit more I wanted to explain to the mindset of why the rivalry started. Oh, Reggie, now you are volunteering information that they not even asking you, Reggie? Who the snitch, Reggie? Who the snitch, Reggie? Why are you testifying in the grand jury in this case, Reggie? You wasn't even there at the, the fight in Vegas. You didn't see the, the, the shoot in Vegas. The shooting happened in Vegas, Reggie. You was on duty and you wasn't there, Reggie. Now you want to volunteer some information, Reggie, for the grand jury there so to make, to make sure KVD get indicted? So y'all not going to call Reggie a snitch now? I can't wait for Reggie to give y'all his goddamn excuse to why you can't call him a snitch in this situation. He's testifying before the prosecution for the prosecution against Keefe D and against Suge Knight right now. Reggie's not a snitch, y'all? Y'all gonna let him spin this and say he's not a snitch, right? Okay. Okay. Bob James, you fucking with Reggie after this? Oh, I forgot you dropped your flag. Marv James, you should not be fucking with Reggie if you read in this, bro. You should not be, Marv James, you should not be rocking with Reggie if you watching this, Marv James. But there's a little more I wanted to explain to the mindset of why the rivalry started. Okay. Is it from your personal knowledge? Okay. Just what I know from the industry, but I don't know. Bro. You just said you wanted to explain the mindset of why the rivalry started. Now, just what I know from the industry, but I don't know. Who is the industry? The comments, the niggas under the, who is the industry, bro? Niggas gonna do anything to get Keefe D uh, uh, indicted to make sure it don't come back to them police. Okay, did you ever, let me ask you this. Did you ever have a conversation with Mr. Shakur about whether or not he had any bad feelings towards Bad Boy Records? After his release from prison, not while he was in prison. Okay, so when Mr. Shakur was released from prison, October 12th of 1995. And at that point, did Mr. Shakur become a recording artist for Death Row Records? Yes, sir. And was he somebody now whose security you were responsible for. I was responsible, had security with him every day while he was out in public. And you failed him. He died. He died. He got killed on your watch. And was it you specifically or somebody, someone you employed? I hired, I hired about four to five different security guards on him daily, and he died. What happened to your four or five guys? He's dead, Reggie. I had about four to five different security guards on him daily, different ones daily from the time actually until his death, to be honest. And he's dead. Your guys sucked. Your guys sucked. They were no Gene Deal. Question, okay. Now with the escalated situation with Bad Boy Records, did you become aware of whether or not Bad Boy Records had used any Compton game for security 
when they were in the LA Southern California region. Yo, bro, I told y'all these niggas is lying. Yo, Puff, 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 get your lawyer, Puff. This nigga Reggie's trying to set you up. They didn't even ask him this. This is the volunteered information that he got from the industry. Yes, sir. And based on your observation, what gangs did Bad Boy employ as their security while in Southern California? Gentlemen from the Compton side, gentlemen from the Compton South Side Crips. Okay. And were you familiar with the South Side Crips from growing up in Compton? Knew of the area, but not until, not from growing up other than playing ba baseball with them, knowing they were from the other, from the area, but not until I became a police officer or started working in the jail that I learned the difference, to be honest. And so you became more familiar with the South Side after you were an adult and were working jails and working patrol and working in patrol. That would be correct. And so how did you become aware that Bad Boy Records was using Southside Crips as a security in Southern California? Streets talking, but mainly saw them at events with them in large numbers. Reggie, you snitching, Reggie. You snitching. Oh, no, you're not. You being a good witness. You being a good witness. You cleaning up the mud, right? For people that are trying to dirty it up or muddy up there, you cleaning the mud. That's what you're doing, huh? Streets talking, main streets talking, but mainly saw them at e a few events with them in large numbers. Okay. And you had to go back now to when Mr. Shulkor was released. Would he talk to you about the animus he had towards the animosity he had towards Puffy or Sean Combs? And his primary recorded artist, Christopher Wallace? Yes, sir. And do you remember what Christopher Wallace's rap name was? He have a few, but Biggie Smalls, Notorious B.I.G., Big Papa. So without getting into details, is it fair to say that Mr. Shakur had really strong feelings about Mr. Combs and Mr. Wallace? Yes, sir. And was that ever reflected in any of Mr. Shakur's music? music and even portrayed in music videos that he did during that time period are you familiar with a song called hit him up yes sir and is it fair to say that in that song that music video mr shakur goes out of his way to insult mr combs and mr wallace in the most graphic explicit ways possible it's one of the top three most diss songs talked about in the hip-hop community as far as rap labels and disrespect to another label and their family members, I mean, is it fair to say that Mr. Shakur talks about having sex with Mr. Wallace's wife? Yes, sir. And talking about killing members of the Bad Boy record label? Yes, sir. And, and as a crew, the record label, the staff, and significantly anybody who was a part of that crew, as you mentioned? Yes, sir. And would you include as part of that crew, meaning anybody who is associated with Bad Boy Records? Yes, sir. Now, as a part of the hip hop culture, as you're aware, you had mentioned that it's still talked about as one of the disc records. Is dissing or disrespecting other artists part of the hip-hop culture, if you're aware? It doesn't happen as often as you would think, but it does happen. Yes, sir. And we had EDI Malcolm Greenwich testify in this case as well. Were you aware of Malcolm Greenwich being associated with Tupac Shakur? Yes, sir. And was he a part of that particular song, Hit Him Up? Yes, sir. And was he also, to your knowledge, was he a close associate of Mr. Shakur? I believe so. Yes, sir. Yeah, I know so. Yes, sir. 
Now, I wanted to get to another award show, the Soul Train Awards in 1996. Were you at that Soul Train Awards? Yes, sir. Where was the Soul Train Awards? It was at the Shrine Auditorium. It was at the Shrine Auditorium in California. The Shrine, uh, Shrine Auditorium. And to your knowledge, was the Bad Boy record label also expected to be at the Soul Train Awards? Yes, sir. Can you tell us about what you experienced leading up to and at the Soul Train Awards? We had, uh, well, there was some back and forth regarding, you know, who was going to open up the award show where Mr. Cornelius elected to go with Biggie Smalls to open up the show. So Mr. Knight pulled Mr. Shakur from the performance, uh, pulled Mr. Shakur from performing at that particular show. However, he convinced Mr. Knight to have Mr. Shakur come and that would be, and that he would be very happy were his exact words that I learned that I heard him tell him. And so there was a decision made to actually attend the Soul Train Awards? Yes, sir. And this was in March of 1996. Yes, sir. And so how many people arrive or go to Soul Train Awards from death row? On that particular night or day, we brought about 50 to 60 associates. About 50 to 60 associates? I assume some of them are people working for you in Right Way Protective Services. Is that right? Actually, that particular night, we only had about two of my guys there. So then who made up of this 50 to 60? A few artists, maybe about eight to 10 of them. And the others were gang members from the Compton area, not just Mar Pyru, but from Mar Pyru, but from Pyru areas in the city of Compton. So all blood sets, pyrules is what we call them in Compton. Okay, pyrule sets? Yes, sir. Which is the same as bloods. Yo, Reggie, you snitching, bro. Reggie, you giving them all the street lingo? You, you trying to help them uh, figure out the street language? Oh, you know, you just being a good witness. You just being a good witness, brother. We understand. Is it communicated to you how you are going to enter the award show, whether it's the front or the back, or how does that work? So our intent initially was to all go in through the back gate, a private entry, you know, the back way where they have motor homes and where the artists come out, like their little dressing rooms and stuff like that and very limited parking space. But I got a heads up and I played a little double agent that day that they were planning on being disruptive at the war show. Really, Reggie? And by they, you mean the members of the Pyrus who were showing up or planning on showing up at the Soul Train Awards? Yeah, with us with the death row record label. Yes, sir. And so I knew the head of security at the shrine and I tipped him off to what was about to happen and to only allow a limited amount of people in, which they did. Hold on one second, yeah. So and so who is allowed in through the artist interest or the back interest? Mr. Knight, Mr. Shakur, and he had about three or four of the members of the outlaws, which would be uh EDI, EDI I mean, Malcolm Green, I believe. Malcolm Greenwich. 
and two other members. And there was a singer by the name of Danny Boy. They were in a Hummer with Mr. Knight. Myself and Frank Alexander, which was Mr. Shakur's primary security, was trailing behind them. And I was riding in the passenger seat of Mr. Alex's, Mr. Alexander's vehicle. I'm going to fast forward in this event a little bit. At some point, was there a confrontation between Death Row Records and the Bad Boy Records during or backstage of the show? Yes, sir. So what happened was Mr. Like I said, they elected to have Biggie Smalls or Mr. Wallace to perform and they were leaving. They were planning on leaving probably because they knew that Death Row was coming. I don't know, but they were planning on leaving. As we were going into the auditorium or exiting our vehicles to go into the auditorium, they were coming out. So I guess it was bad timing and they were, and then there were an argument that followed with a little gunplay or a pointing. Reggie, you snitching, bro. Reggie. You know you talking to the prosecution, right, Reggie? <laughs> <laughs> so who was the argument between Reggie? Mr. Sh Mr. Shakur was the most vocal. Mr. Wallace and then his entourage. And you speak about Mr. Wallace entourage there. Were there any members? You had mentioned earlier Southside Crips had been doing security. Leading, leading, Your Honor, leading. You had mentioned earlier that Southside Crips had been doing security for Bad Boy. Were there any members of the Southside Crips with Mr. Wallace during this incident? Yes. There were approximately 10 to 15 gentlemen that was exiting, and I noticed about 8 to 10, maybe 9 that were, that I have known from the city of Compton. You know, my law enforcement days. And I did notice one particular individual. I bet that's key VD. And what particular individual did you notice? Mr. Davis, Mr. Keith Davis, or Dwayne Davis? And does Mr. Davis go by a nickname that you're aware of? Yes, sir. What nickname is that? Keith E.D. You snitching, Reggie. Reggie, you snitching. <laughs> This thing can be calling everybody a fucking snitch. <laughs> this ain't call everybody a fucking snitch. You fucking stool pigeon with a fucking badge and a bandana in the other hand. This thing got a badge in one hand, a bandana in the other hand, sitting on the stand. Fuck out of here. And y'all see it supporting this nigga, that motherfucking... Let Tupac get killed on his watch. He was the head of security and was nowhere around. And y'all fucking support this clown. And is it fair to say that you knew Mr. Davis to be a member of the Southside Compton Crips during this time period? Yes, sir. He was a Crip. Yeah, he was. You fucking tsunami snitch. Hey, Ice-T. Ice-T, I thought you said Keith. I mean, Reggie was a dry snitch. Ain't nothing dry about this, Ice T. There's nothing dry about this. We got the paperwork, Ice T. We got the paperwork. <laughs> we got the paperwork. We got the paperwork. These niggas with their paperwork parties. We having a party over here. Cheers, y'all. The red cup for the Mar Pie rules, right? Cheers, nigga. Yes, sir. I mainly knew him as a gang member, but mainly knew him because he was a major drug player in our city. Whoa, Reggie. Reggie, you was a major drug dealer, too. You went to drug. You was dealing drugs, too. Are you telling on Keefe? Nigga, you moved stuff from, from Compton to, to Memphis. You was a major drug dealer, too. They didn't, did they ask you about your drug dealing days in this? Well, you know, the defense, they gonna, they, they'll they get you on the cross-examination. When you come to court to testify, the defense is going to talk about your dirty drug dealing days too, brother. 
Okay. So he was somebody that was common knowledge within your city that Mr. Davis wasn't necessarily a shooter as much as somebody who dealt in narcotics. Correct. Yo, objection, Your Honor. Leading, leading, Your Honor. Objection. Objection. Your, lead, your Honor. Sustained. God damn. These niggas is really... Trying to set this nigga up, paint this picture for this jury. Like, oh, nah, KVD ain't do the shooting. He ain't the type to shoot somebody. He going to pass the gun because he sell drugs. Yo, bro, stop, man. Stop. Correct. And ladies and gentlemen, just for your edification, this information is being offered not to talk about, what is it, prosenity? or Mr. Davis' character, but to meet the elements of the crimes associated with the gang enhancement in his case. Exactly. But to meet the elements of crimes associated with the gang enhancement in his case. So these niggas can try it. We come with the Rico later. Does anybody have any problems following that instructions? Seeing no hands? Go ahead and finish talking to the rat. All right, so now I'm showing you grand jury exhibit number two. It's on the monitor. Do you recognize the person depicted in grand jury exhibit two? Yes, sir. Who is that? Keith E. Davis. I know his, I knew as his moniker, but I believe his correct name is Dwayne Keith Davis. You know him as Keith E. D? Keith E. D, yeah. Give him a guy, give up his AKA, uh, Reggie. Why don't you? All right. You had mentioned there was a gun play during this incident. It's fair to say that you did not see Mr. Davis with a firearm during that event. No, I didn't see him with the firearm. Ain't this the nigga that said KVD pulled the gun? Well, I guess he gonna change his story now because they said it was C. Gutter. But he always said it was KVD, didn't he? Didn't he? I guarantee you can find... Re Reggie saying Keith E.D. pulled the gun at the Soul Train Awards. I guarantee you, you can find that. Now, I didn't see him with a firearm, and nobody actually shot a firearm during this event. No, just uh, it was a gentleman that brandished the weapon. And the gentleman with the associated with the Bad Boy record label or with the Death Row record label? Definitely the bad boy record label. He was standing next to him and in the area with Mr. Davis and in the area of Mr. Wallace. Reggie, didn't you say you had your hand on your gun too? You ain't going to tell that part? Okay. 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 So can you tell, tell us how that happened? What exactly happened, Reggie? So as we were, like I said, getting out of the vehicles, as it in the vehicles to go in, they were coming out. Immediately, Mr. Shakur noticed them, and he started yelling towards them. At the time, I'm next to Mr. Shakur, and the gentleman brought the gun out of his waist, but he never raised the gun, but I did. Oh, there you go. So one of the people associated with Bad Boy Records brandished a firearm but did not point it at anybody? Correct. And then what did you do as a result? Because you're security, right? Yes, sir. What did you do as a result of seeing this? I jumped out of the car, and I was pretty much on top of it. In my words, I pointed my gun towards the gentleman with the gun and begged him not to point that gun and raise it, and raise the gun. And did the situation ultimately resolve? With shots being fired? Yes, sir. They took off and ran towards the streets out of the parking lot. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, ho. They had a shootout with the Soul Train Awards, y'all?
And did the situation ultimately resolve with, oh, without, I thought he said with, I was getting ready to say, hold on. And did the situation ultimately resolve without shots being fired? Yes. Yes, sir. They took off and ran towards the streets out of the parking lot. Did Mr. I'll strike that. All right. Now I'm going to fast forward to Vegas. Okay. Was it common for death row records to come out to Vegas for Mike Tyson fights? Yes, sir. Would you come out typically with death row records for the Tyson fights? Yes, sir. About how many fights would you say you went out to prior to this incident? Three. Now, were you aware? Well, leading up to this time, so we're talking about September 7th of 1996, okay? Leading up to this time between we have the Soul Train Awards in March 96, and now we have the Tyson fight in September of 96. April, May, June, July, August, September. Six months. Did y'all ask who's Reggie fired in August on August 27th or 28th? No. Let's see how this goes. Leading up to this time, we have the Soul Train Awards in March of 1996, and now we have the Tyson fight in 19, uh, in September of 96. Yes, sir. Is it fair to say that the hostilities between Bad Boy Records and Death Row Records were still going on and maybe even increasing? It was major because of that song, The Hit Em Up, had been released later. Not on that, on that initial album that was released in February. It had hit the streets in about April or May, and it was making a lot of noise. And then it is it fair to say that during that time, as you know, the Southside Crips were still doing work for Bad Boy Records. Yes, sir. And is it fair to say that during this time, Death Row Records is still affiliating itself with the Mall Pyro? Yes, sir. Yo, Puff, you better go get a lawyer, nigga. These niggas, this nigga Reggie is setting your ass up, bro. They are really trying to set this nigga Puff up, bro. Now, initially, when you go out to Vegas, what are you... Now, initially, when you go to Vegas, what are you there responsible for? For the Tyson Selden fight in September of 1996? You know me, you know me, I'm like patting myself on the back and saying everything other than getting the rooms and everything ready. But I was pretty much should point God or go to God, you know, in the streets, like I said, not at the office. But his office, his assistants in there would be pretty much communicate, would pretty much communicate everything to me because it was hard to get a hold of Mr. Knight. But my main responsibility that night and my biggest concern on my plate was getting the club, Club 662, ready for Mr. Shakur, Mr. Knight, and the entourage and everybody to come in and get there successfully. Well, you failed at that part, brother. You failed at that part. How was they going to get there successfully, nigga, with no walkie-talkies or gun, Reggie? Huh? And we had an issue with trying to get our permits and licenses and all of that. And we were trying to be on point to have a good showing for the people, those people involved. So is it fair to say largely you were responsible for logistics and security? Yes, sir. Now, of the people who were coming out to Vegas for the fight, it would be Shug. Is that fair to say? Of course, yes. Mr. Shakur? Yes, sir. We had talked a little bit about the rap group, the Outlaws. Was it your expectation that they were coming out that weekend? A couple of them, because a couple of them was too young. And so I think only two of them came that was in the group. Okay. And then, you know, did Suge have some of his, as you called them, homeboys come out as well? Yes, sir. And among the homeboys, 
Are you familiar with somebody who went by the moniker Neckbone? Yes, sir. And who is that? Roger Williams. And do you know him to be a Mar Pyro member? Yes, sir. Yo, Reggie, you, what is you snitching on niggas? Why are you telling niggas they in the game, bro? Are you a cop or you you a, uh, a drug dealer right now? Or are you just a good witness of security? Or are you being a good witness? How is you snitching on these niggas? Telling them they in the game, bro. Wow. This is what we doing, Reggie? This is what we doing? Or what you going to say? You ain't no snitch? It was your job? That's what you going to say, Reggie? It was your job? Wow. Shug, you let this nigga come work in there knowing he was going to tell on all the motherfucking gang niggas? And did you know him to be a Ma Pyro member? Yes, sir. And then Buntry, are you familiar with some somebody who went by Buntry? Yes, sir. Who's that? Alton McDonald. And was he also a Ma Pyro member? Yes, sir. Damn, Reggie. And was he also out here or, yeah, out here in 96? Yes, sir. September 96. And did you know somebody by the name of Mob James? Yes, sir. And what was his true name? James McDonald. Damn, Reggie. You told on your boy, Mob James. Wow. And was he out there that weekend in 1996? Yes, sir. And was he also affiliated with Mob Pyro? Yes, sir. Mob James, you know you're going to get pull pulled into this Rico, right? You're going to get pulled into this Rico, Mob James. You're the only nigga left. Your ass going to jail with these niggas. Oh, you were in Trayvon. Did you know somebody by the name of Trayvon Lane? Yes, sir. What was his nickname if you knew? Trey or Youngster? We call him Youngster. Probably in the streets, they just refer to him as Trey. Now, was he somebody that... So is he somebody also that came out for the fight? Yes, sir. Was he also somebody affiliated with Mark Pyro? Yes, sir. Wow, Reggie. Damn, nigga. You telling on everybody. I want to talk a little bit about Mr. Lane. You heard of an incident that allegedly occurred at the Lakewood Mall prior to the fight in September of 96. Is that right? Yes. Were you there? Where? At the fight? At the Lakewood Mall. Sorry. No. No, sir. But you have become aware of this idea that Mr. Lane's chain had been taken from him? Attempt to be taken from him. Okay. And can you tell us a little bit about were you familiar with the death row chains? Yes, sir. Can you tell us a little bit more about the death row chains? The death row chains were gifted to all of us as Christmas gifts that were considered real close to Mr. Knight. We got them in December of 1995. Christmas, and there were different variants of them. That one is mine. Okay, so for the record, I got to clean up the record. I put on the moniker and showing Mr. Wright Jr. States or Grand Jury Exhibit number 41. Can you tell us what we're looking at in Grand Jury Exhibit number 41? A death row chain, one variant of the death row chain that was that were gifted by Mr. Knight as Christmas gift to certain artists and certain people that he would consider his staff. And you said that, you said, and you said, I think you said, wait, and you said, I think you had said specifically that grand jury exhibit number 41 is your chain. Is that right? Your medallion? 
I could have sworn I gave that picture because I recognized the background and I know because we had different variants of di of the diamonds. And I think Mr. Ladd must have provided that to you all. If not, then somehow you all got it. Damn, Reggie, you giving them pictures of your chain? You giving them evidence too, Reggie? Reggie. Fair to say you recognize that as being your death row medallion. Yes, sir. Okay, did Mr. Knight give those death row chains to just anybody? Or did you have to be somebody close and meaningful to death row records or to him? Yes, like there were different variants. And I would like to explain because some of them were the record parts and the death row doesn't have diamonds. Some of them are all diamond out, even the bezel. Like the main artists like Mr. Shakur and Snoop Dogg's. Mr. Knight had a pretty big one. His was the his was bigger and his was all diamond out as well. The ones that Mr. Lane and them had, it was just the diamonds wasn't on the death row and on the records. It was just the man. It's supposed to be an electric chair, a guy sitting in an electric chair because, you know, we on death row. And that's how Mr. Lane's and the guys that I would call homeboys, their chains were done. And it was only about six or eight of them that had it. Maybe four artists, four or five artists, maybe a little more. Six artists that had them. Is it fair to say that death row and Mr. Knight, Mr. Shakur, even yourself, took a lot of pride in having these death row chains? Yes, sir. It is also fair to say that if somebody was trying to take a chain, it would be an ultimate sign of disrespect. Leading. Yeah, very much so. And we would even catch a lot of flack for not coming back with our chain. So what would happen if somebody had their chain taken from them? To us or to the person that did it? Well, both. First to you, what would happen to you if you came back and you didn't have your death row chain? What would... Would you lose status or face within the group? Hazen. Hazen? Okay. A lot of hazen. A lot of hazen. I think what happened to the ones that eventually later, because he started giving them out more and they did lose them, got into fights behind them. They got hazed. Nothing major, but it was major hazen. And how would members of Death Row feel about somebody trying to steal a chain? especially off somebody who was a homeboy. Yeah, we had heard that there were a bounty put on them, so we were all on alert. Ain't nobody say shit about no bounty, nigga. I didn't wear mine out. If I went in the entourage or something like that, I just didn't need the drama. And so to lose one back at that time, it would have... It would have had to probably retaliate in some way, not the artists or myself, but definitely the homeboys. And is it fair to say that part, that's particularly true if somebody is trying to take the chain from a homeboy? You said, did it happen or definitely? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they would definitely have to prove their status. So I guess you are right. They might be disowned or something if there wasn't any retaliation or something behind losing their chain. Yo, my God. They lied. They setting all of this up to give motive to keep ED in them and to give motive to Ma Pyros for beating up Orlando to give Keith ED in them or motive to kill Orlando. They basing it all around this chain and they making it a war between bad boy, bad boy Crips and death row bloods. This is, yo, my nigga, this Reggie is dirty, man. 
This nigga had the nerve to call Suge a snitch. And say he's disappointed in Suge. But you just told on your man, Marv James. Now you obviously heard a lot of talk. It's common knowledge that there was an incident at Lakewood Mall prior to the Tyson fight that involved Trayvon Lane. Is that right? Yes, sir. Was Mr. Shug or was Mr. Shug Knight aware of the incident where somebody attempted to take Trayvon Chains Lane from him? Yeah. I don't know how. I don't know if it was June or May when it that happened, but it was only like a couple of months prior to the incident at the MGM that his chain was, we was all, we all, we always got the word, we always got the word attempted. I don't know if Mr. Knight gave him one, if there's evidence out there that it was taken. Mr. Knight might have wanted to save face and gave him one, but I know he still claimed to have always still have his chain. Even to this day, I still him, I still see him wear the chain. All right. But in terms of you, Mr. Knight and Mr. Shakur were aware that somebody at least attempted to take away Trayvon Lane's chain at this Lakewood Mall. It was very well known around the label. Yes, sir. Hey, yo, man. This dude, Reggie, got some goddamn nerve, bro. This dude got some goddamn nerve, bro. They, they are lining this whole thing up, bro. They are, they are setting this whole prosecution up to offer murder rap just so they can use all the murder rap and all the testimony over the years on YouTube, whatever, to try to line Keefe D up. Yo, yo, man, this is crazy, bro. Reggie's definitely the inside informant. They got they got most of their information from Reggie. You could tell. Reggie feeding them all this bullshit and they believe in it. They're gonna lose this case and be mad as F. And did you have some amongst the label? Was there a person in particular that you all felt might have been responsible for trying to take the chain off Trayvon Lane. I don't know if I learned that later. Okay, so if you don't know, we'll move on. Okay. All right. Now, you got Trayvon Lane, who's involved in that incident at the Lakewood Mall. You've got Mr. Shakur. You've got members of Mall Pyru. You've got Mr. Knight planning on coming to Vegas for the Tyson Velt. Felden fight, Selden fight. Is that right? That's correct, sir. Yo, my nigga, this nigga just. What did Marv James say he wasn't a, uh, uh, he's not Marv Pyru? What if any of these niggas want to lie and say they not in the game? Reggie gonna really come and testify against Marv James and say, nah, nigga, you are Marv Pyru. Don't lie, Marv James. Come on, James McDonald. Don't lie, man. You are mob. You pyro, man. Don't like what the f yo Reggie is. Yo Reggie, this is what happens when you fucking put cops down with the crew. 
This is exactly what happens when you fucking put cops down with the crew, nigga. This is what y'all niggas get. This is where KVD said, nigga, we ain't fuck with no police. Sugar got the police working with him. Man, ain't no street niggas fuck with the police. And did you come with them or did you come before them? I came out the day before that Friday. There was a class. Let me guide it a little. Let me guide it a little bit clearer or make it clearer. So you get there, you get here in Vegas before them. You said part of the things you were concerned about was logistics, particularly associated with the club. Is that right? Yes. And what club are we talking about? Club 662, which was the club where Mr. Shakur had to do a, Mr. Knight was planning on trying, here go Reggie stuttering, or people thought he owned the club, which I know he wasn't at that point the owner of the club, but that was what was projected out there, what people believe. Nigga, stop it, nigga. We know Club 662 was Shug's, nigga. Get, oh my God, bro. Did you come out here to meet with an attorney or to talk about running the club and confirming to Nevada regula regulations as it relates to running a club? Yes, sir. Leading, bro. Leading. Yo, man. No, no, no. No, bigger. No, nigga. No, nigga. No, nigga. I'm stopping right here for today. This nigga here is full of bullshit, bro. This nigga is full of shit, bro. I'm stopping right here before he go into this whole lawyer shit to set it up that the lawyer told him he didn't want them to have no fucking guns. He said his shit up right now. We already know the story, Reggie. We already know what you fucking testified to, nigga. You are full of poo poo. Your, your pamp is full of shit, nigga. You full of shit, bro. Stop it, little burn. Stop it, little burn. Stop it. Yo, I'll get back to Reggie's testimony tomorrow. I, I can't do no more, man. This is bullshit, bro. This is bullshit. And I'm too hungry right now to keep going. And I know y'all don't want to see me eat and do this. So I will come back tomorrow night and finish up Reggie. I might come back tonight if I eat and feel good. But if not, I will be back with part two of Reggie Wright's goddamn fucking testimony. This is crazy, bro. This nigga done, snatched, done snitched on the whole death row, bro. Gave up everybody's street name and everybody's gang affiliation. He's dirty, bro. He's dirty. Choke no joke, y'all already know, man. This nigga is dirty. Watch Reggie, because you'll be a first-time felon. I'm out. Wow. Wow, Reggie. Wow, Reggie. Wow. Check it out. Choke no joke. Learn from mistakes. DJ S and S the great. It ain't no telling you be a first time felon. No telling when you be a first time felon. It ain't no telling you be a first time felon. No telling when you be a first time felon. Best day of my life, no sleep all night. Broke day for weeks, my cash was right. My combo tight, take our loot, unite. 23 hour shifts, had to see loot like Mike. Cash lovely, yeah, Dougie. How could this day get so ugly? Wifey about to pop. Like some bubbly Yo, doodles now most Don't really bug me Felt like a star Cop first car Get up with the guard What it is, baby, pa Hip out the cop a van Get up with our mans Before we reached our low spot Toes blam Underwear, what happened Discussing the clapping It wasn't loud Ain't shit gonna happen Me being stupid Instead of getting they moving This nigga kept chefing Like the woo one Then we heard a knock No one knew where this spot Six niggas in the spot, six niggas not. Nah. Ain't no telling you be a first time felon. No telling when you be a first time felon. It ain't no telling you be a first time felon. No telling when you be a first time felon. 
It ain't no telling, you be a first time felon. No telling, when you be a first time felon. I'm in the precinct, all damn even. This good cop, bad cop shit got me steaming. No, I was caught, I ain't give a fuck. Had jokes like the usual suspects line up. Oop, time's up, came back fuck. Shirt sure wrinkled up, the pigs rough me up. Time's up, heard them clink of the cuffs. Niggas was so deep, they had to call on the bus. Everybody the jacks outside waiting on us Like ghetto celebs, our cells ain't plush Five in the book and gave a whooping He never forget, they gotta be split Up in the courtroom, they causing ruckus Everybody the jacks waiting on us Try to bail us out, that thought got thrown out Bill one so I couldn't be half in the gal Hopped out, that's what first fell in the bow Back on the bus, right is the row Wifey in the courtroom crying out We love y'all with tears running in their mouth It ain't no telling you be a first time felon No telling when you be a first time felon It ain't no telling you be a first time felon No telling when you be a first time felon Choke Stay Shout out to Tasha Rain Shout out to Tasha Rain Shout out to Tasha Rain Kenyatta New moderators in the building. New moderators in the building. Don't follow those cats. I don't know where my man Dev at. My man Dev ain't show up. I don't know what happened to him. Stay the L. Don't follow those cats. Choke those choke. You already know. Let's go out the gray go. Now I'm out the game. Feel good, not pitching in the hood. Uh, and I really don't think I could uh, go back to selling crack and stashing them packs in my ass. I maintain weekly money the same. And now nah, I don't go through them games. Niggas testing my brain with them triple beans filled with change. Now I'm out the game. Pot crack. Grams in the drain, getting hit with the fake exchange. Like bacon soda flour, after being on Broadway for hours. Getting knocked, being back at start. Niggas testing if I got heart. Pushing me to pop some shots, just stop the ball before the start. Old lady with the binocs, give description to cops. Why they try to tear us apart with that good cop, bad cop. I ain't going for the game, he ain't tell you a thing. Your partner's with him, saying the same. You tighten them cuffs till you see veins. Stop fucking yanking them down. I'm out the game. They might fuck you if you ain't sane. And nigga never sniff cocaine. And I don't care what game or part of the error you claim. I'm out the game. Gray Scarface, you must be insane. Nigga, Tony fucked the boy's name. His right hand man, he's slain to get his back blown out the game. On game. Do it on the low, let nobody know. No pillow talk to hoes. Yeah. And if he step on your toes, don't bust a blame. Cause everybody will know. Or get out the game. Yeah. They say that change is good. Uh -huh. It's a lot of stress in the hood. And I know if you could, you would. Get out the game, but you stuck in that time. Wear the nigga in public like shine For a witness to drop a dime For self-defense, do a dime Celebs doing time Mike Vick on the child line Even Kobe, Jason Williams, Gage Kick like Shinobi Little Kim for perjury uh, You know you done fucked up, right? You know you done fucked up, right? Let's go When it's late night Make sure it's packed tight. And when, when you take, take those flights, never eye the Jake in sight. And shake them fuckers when they dead to right. Uh, make it a fifth go rumble. Because of stick of trouble. Blasting your gap for a cat. For in fact, with some crap that don't involve you. For some dudes that don't love you. All they want to do is pawn you. Until you go down. And don't do shit for you when you lock down. When you touch down, uh, but it tell you to go to the pound. Yeah. The same block that gave you a pound. Years in the pen, now you living again. What my state are you in? When you back 
looking for 10. And you was just waiting for a team to come home to relive it again. Entrapment should be a sin. The way they reel us in. We'll roll us to a revolving door to bring us in. This shit is insane. The game is insane. The game will fuck with your brain. That's why I'm out the game. Yeah. Just get out the game, man. I know they told y'all. There's only two ways out. Jail and death. Nah, just get out, nigga. Just get out, man. It's easy. Just walk away, nigga. If they care about you, they'll let you go. If you in the game and you want to go and get a better life and they won't let you walk away, what do that say? Get out the game, nigga. You want to sleep in? Keep telling y'all niggas, man, get out the game, man. Joke no joke. Grego, you already know. The beast is chemical, baby. That's why I'm out the game. Yeah. Choke no joke, you know what it is. Learn from mistakes out right now on all platforms. This one right here is for the mixtape. Let's go. Yo, Nas, I ain't do this for clout. I'm just a real nigga trying to figure you out. How you don't put blood in this Judas mouth. Talking Japanese wine like you fanning out. Blushing at this bitch that disrespects your kid and her earth. I know that it hurt. You know, back then when he made these disparaging remarks and comments about my daughter and created this disgusting visual, there were so many people around him um, that stayed quiet. They said absolutely nothing. Comment, I know that it hurt. You said Pac left us. When rappers that wink at other rappers in the studio, which made me think, yo, what he got on you? And homie in pink, cause at Webster Hall, he didn't stream one link. Yo, y'all glutton for punishment. I'm sick and I'm done with it. If it was part of your plan, I was hard in my word on it. I'm just your fan. With little celebrity, and some say it's just the hate in me. Nah, I'm cut from a cloth. You don't brush shit off. Well, the penthouse of law gotta have a ceiling. Only forgive hoes. Sexual healing, and that thought right now is not appealing. With these chicks with the dicks like little Nas X, I'm not a fan. You damaged your brand. Yo, Nas, don't ever do that shit again. I'm signing off. Let's go stand, yeah. Choke no joke, you know what it is. <laughs> you know what it is. Oh yeah, and you nigga, I ain't sorry for shit. I ain't with your boys' games, nigga. I'm with the shit. Wedge, Webster Dictionary defines the word as a substance that is used for splitting wood or rocks. Something causing a breach or separation. <laughs> it's funny what that lens can capture. Separation. Division. How y'all having a meeting about Jay without? Nope, not drugs right there. Nobody talking about nothing. How come y'all having a meeting without Jay? Without, without Jay without? I don't get it. It's 10.30 in the morning. I ain't going to get me off. Please go get him. No, actually, I was just going to go to the restroom. Okay. Why are you leaving? I'm asking a question. She doesn't have an answer. This well, is, this well is, I'm this wondering, is, with, this with, this with, this with this line of thought, is, is it? What pattern is it? John McNeely and all y'all. But y'all have my biggest artist here. And y'all in here, y'all Def Jam staff is dealing with Jay's marketing without me. We were Please late. explain that to me. Because this seems treacherous. And animosity. What you mean bullshit? The fuck? Y'all niggas having meetings about my artist without calling me? Get off the bullshit. It ain't no bullshit. Get off the bullshit. It ain't no bullshit. Man, look, all y'all look, everybody here is ashamed of y'all. Who wants to work under a cow? They don't have to. I ain't, cow. I ain't with your boys, James. Nigga, I'm with the shit. I'm nothing like Nas. I'm with the shit. 
I'm more like jungle, one to bust your shit. But bro got me on chill. He said I'm Illmatic, with the static, with the ratchets. Let's go to Brooklyn, cause he gotta have it. School days, would've called you faggot and smoked you. Like a Spike Lee joint Yo, the greatest of all timers yeah. Got hit with all timers <laughs> You buster Nigga, your mic with the shine Knock out Yeah, one line is Give you a reason To be a one eye Without reasonable doubt You been a liar You headache came Jazz O inspired Rape Damon So they trying to take they, they, they trying to take our franchise from That's what they trying to do Make this beat for They trying to I, I bet you they're staging this beat for us Trust me. Trust me. It was all about the power to, you know, to get rid of Dame Dash, you know, and, and take Jay-Z to the next level without Dame, you know? And it was, you know, D Dame should stop blaming Leo and, and, and Todd Moskowitz and stop blaming Steve Stout. You know about the, um, the Scarface party and all that? How they, they make sure the house on in Puerto Rico? He's gonna be there performing, but doing something with them. Who, Jay? Yeah. Yeah. No? Yeah. He's gonna be out there for that. With the um the, the release of the Scarface DVD. Jay's performing for that? Um, now I need two lips to blow this like a trumpet, you dumb shit. This is an unusual musical. I conducted you looking at the black Warren Buffett, so all critics can duck sick. I don't care if you see the Lawrence Tucker or you Bill O'Reilly. You only rallied me up for three years. They had me peeing out in the cup. Now they about to free me up. What you think I'm gonna be? What? Rehabilitated, man. I still feel hatred. I'm young, black, and rich, so they wanna strip me naked. But you never had me like Christina Aguilera. But catch me at the West Side driving like Halle Berry or the West. Fuck it. I'm peace and love, y'all. The black guy, I'm on the way. And then we do an party, so. Stop taking I mean, uh, Steve Stout's direction. And what was Steve Stout telling you to do? He was, he orchestrated, he walked me through how to get rid, his plan was to get rid of Dame Dash. He told you that? That was the plan. Okay. Rape Dame and Chris, they ran a liar through the rock and the fire. Damn you cold, built the nation, the prop back home. Are you the king of LA? When Cube is home, how you bang in LA? After when Nip is gone, Mr. Mr. Smith, yeah, I'm nice with the gift. Two, the double tundras got those two. Your wisdom, knowledge, that I'm king too. I'm sorry I met the other side of you. That's the gift and the curse. Mm -hmm. I'm Christ from birth, from the hearse to the dirt. Fake niggas claim hurt, so I stay on my bullshit like I'm dirt and never shy. Let my feelings fly, Let's go. cause we all die, yeah. like y'all been, <laughs> nigga I'm here, only fear I have is truth not be told, we all get old, it's choke no joke, y'all already know, let's go, choke no joke, you already know, learn from mistakes out right now on all platforms, this for the mixtape, the 50 year old platinum virgin, <laughs> Welcome to AMC Theory Live. Choke, no joke. Yeah. It's choke, no joke. Supreme bigger figure, big cap, the war in, the club king, the DJ Johnny Walker Red, MC Frank Jigger, the celebrity's choice, Sean Brophy, sound engineer, joke no joke, 
legendary videographer. Sterling Cox. I was the head of security. Alpha Grinion. My name is V. Omega. Big G. It's Vim Rock from the legendary Naughty by Nature. That was Peter Ghost, LOX, D Block. Tex, Smith and Wesson. LB Fan, Mr. Cheeks. The cool, the DJ, the red alert. Kid Capri. The tunnel was a hip hop nuclear. It was the epicenter. It was the domain, the temple. It was the mecca. Nothing was that melting pot of hip hop that kept the paradigm going. It's almost like what Rucker did for street basketball. The tunnel was that of music industry. My Sunday ritual going to the tunnel was, I'm telling you, your ass better be there. You just pretty much did push ups. We had to drink a couple bottles of Hennessy, go get smoked, leave the jewelry and watches at home. Before you even get to the tunnel, you gotta get on the block. You started from 11th Avenue, and when you got to that door, the search procedures was no other. First time I ever heard of take your shoes off, open your mouth, was in the tunnel. It was damn near anything but a full cavity search. Security at the tunnel was no joke. The beatdowns did happen. Some of them, if you had that chain out, that shit was leaving with one of them niggas. We had a handful of cats. When we were taking you out, they were digging in your pockets. The code check at the tunnel was crazy because you ain't know if you was gonna get your shit back. Sometimes the bloops happen where you might not get your coat. A lot of boys wanted to get their girls some fur coats, you know? So, I mean, it was free. The bar was always on till after the tunnel. You might get fake alcohol. Bartenders might have got counterfeit. The dance floor was always rocking. It looked like a video all the time. The tunnel had a very unique situation at the bathroom. It was co-ed. The bathroom was Solomon Gomorrah. I was like this, looking, trying to look past the dudes like when they was going in the urinal. The tunnel was a one-stop shop. They had food, they had alcohol, drugs. I saw weed the tub. It was just oozing money. Backstage, it was like the club amongst the club. That's where all the so-called stars who were scary to be in the crowd, that's where they hung out at. The dopest things about the tunnel for me to remember is hearing my records get played up in there. The top maybe of all time tunnel banger. Or well, anything bad, boy. Every Biggie record, any shit by whole. Shook ones with bananas in there. Nori Capone, that bang bang. Andy up. Any one of Buster joints. Wild Out would actually start a fight. The best performance I've ever seen, Jay-Z performed in front of the DJ booth. The DJ booth was bouncing like a ball. Snoop and Dre. When Dre was there. DMX, get at me, dog. The king of the tunnel was Jay-Z. Buster Rhymes. DMX is the king. Queen of the tunnel. Mary J. Blige. Foxy and Lil' Kim. Eve. King of the tunnel record label wise was Def Jam. It's bad boy. The best DJ at the tunnel was Flex. Big cap all day. Flex used to break off the record, but he used to try to bully cap, like, don't spin this, because when I get here, I want to spin it. No, nigga, fuck wrong with you. What the tunnel did for artists is solidify their street music. That gave us a platform, set up Rough Riders, Rockefeller, uh, Bad Boy, slew of other artists. The closing of the tunnel, it was kind of sad because that was a big piece of hip hop. So losing the tunnel was like a little kid losing Disney. A famous mosque closing down. I think when the tunnel closed, it was necessary. Niggas was coming to miss it. When you hear people of the late 70s, I've talked about Studio 54. The tunnel was the Studio 54 of hip hop. Choke no joke. Yeah. You know what Choke it is. Choke no joke. You know what it is. Let's go, let's go. 2020, rich niggas, money funny yeah. We got killer bees and I lost my honey My little sex master, yeah she was a distraction To my mathematics, then corona happened yeah. The government capping on what's really happening Rock Nation signing niggas that's out here ratting And Jay's the captain what? of the ship? Ain't this a bitch you keep his sign and snitch? We lost Andre and Rich, life's a bitch Can't have a funeral, no matter if you rich or poor Overpopulated at morgues Funeral homes, bodies all on the floor No food in stores, no me no more These the last days if you never prayed Have faith, all sort of illness a day Yo, it's tough when you see Puff rock a hoodie with his baby mama hanging from a cross, you lost. Damn, you told the CEO on the gram he was a handsome man. Oh. That's sexual harassment in front of millions of fans. You made five on the scram like Sunday Leticia. Uh -huh. Joseph don't leave, Mary and Jesus. Uh -huh. Sags, self pleasing, some sneak thieves. If we were kids, you call them flat leavers. They use you, don't need you. It's birth you, they see ya. Cross you, then be ya, curve you, and flee ya Niggas wanna be you, until they see you They idolize you, like you in the case Nigga, you know who got punched in the face In the A on stage, or any place 
A nigga like me never retire like me. And don't even care if the church is the escape. Last real nigga alive amongst your face. Got yeah. big bad, no frosting on my face. <laughs> you can't come out. Epstein flight log is out. And tell us what that spirit cooking about. Head to head with a satanist and niggas and dummies. The power of the dark side block me out. That's why I'm blacking. Get it in any sport trick. That's why you the non factor. 6 9 keep acting yeah. like you ain't acting. Yeah. You wasn't flagging <laughs> in the court yapping. That tough guy on the ground was just blabbing. Nigga, you cap. I'm the king of New York. At y'all niggas, I'm laughing. Yeah. <laughs> At the plaza. <laughs> At the plaza. It's the king of New York. Choke no joke, we here now, you know what it is, eat a wall, stand up. Choke no joke, I'm out, I'll see y'all tomorrow, make sure y'all subscribe, all right, and subscribe to my new channel, this is crazy, y'all, we gonna deal with this tomorrow, oh my god. I'm out.